Okay, welcome to topic number 13. So this is the first of two topics on heat. Heat is a fairly straightforward topic, I find, because it's very, very maths heavy. Uh, a lot of people find it difficult um, because of that, there's kind of numbers flying everywhere. Uh, this is going to be a very short video, maybe 10 minutes, because it's just temperature and thermometers. This is very short. Heat then will be a bit longer, maybe 20 minutes. Um, I'll go through it in my time. Um, and this kind of ties in with electricity domestic circuits, that kind of thing. All right, so the definition of temperature is the same as the definition from junior cert. Uh, it's the temperature of, so what is the temperature? The temperature of an object is the measure of the hotness of an object, okay? The hotness of the object, all right? Um, so it's not measure of the heat, it's the hotness, all right? Uh, we can always tell if they are hot or cold because we just basically feel like it, but the reason we use the word here, hotness, okay? is we basically mean it's a measure of the kinetic energy of the molecules, okay? So in other words, if they have a lot of kinetic energy, they're moving a lot, it appears very, very hot. If they have no kinetic energy, the molecules are barely moving at all, if not moving, and it appears cold, okay? Because energy appears as heat, okay? The SI unit for temperature is the Kelvin, okay? Or the degrees Celsius, depending on what you're using, but oftentimes it's the Kelvin they're looking for. Now you could be asked to convert from temperature in degrees Celsius to Kelvins, all right? How you do it, this is in the log tables. Temperature, degrees Celsius is Kelvins minus 273.15 because zero is absolute zero is zero Kelvins, okay? So I'll just fire through an example here. So for example, number two, minus 100 degrees Celsius, okay? So we want to convert that to Kelvins, okay? So therefore, so degrees Celsius is equal to Kelvins minus 273.15. So therefore, Kelvins equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So you add, all right? So therefore, that's going to be 173.15 Kelvins. Okay, that's all it is, all right? And you do the same with the others. And then, of course, you subtract. So for example, here, uh, 373 Kelvins. So degrees degrees Celsius equals Kelvin minus 273.15. So therefore, we just subtract uh, minus 273.15. So that gives me a value of 99.85 degrees Celsius. There you go. That's it. It's very straightforward, guys. Nothing basic. Nothing too difficult there. Okay. Uh, Thermonic properties. All right. So what is a thermonic property? You need to know this, guys. Uh, it is any physical property that changes measurably with temperature. Okay, so it's any physical property that changes measurably with temperature. Hence why we often say different thermometers have different thermonic properties. Uh, that's why you have to calibrate the thermometers, okay? So an alcohol thermometer will change differently than a, a mercury thermometer, okay? And now nobody really uses them anymore. It's digital is to kind of the, the more accurate way. But back in the day, they were the only two um, that they kind of had before digital kind of became it. Examples of thermonic property, the most common one is this one, the length of a column of liquid. So for example, if you have your uh, thermometer, a liquid thermometer, you'll see the liquid rise with the tube and you read it off the scale, off the side, okay? Resistance, okay, so electrical resistance because basically as you heat something up, the, the heat is lost in the form of heat, or the energy, electricity is lost in the form of heat. Color strips, they were often seen. Um, they're kind of gone now. They don't really see them anymore. And EMF and thermal couples, okay? But the top two are the kind of more common ones you'll see. Now, the principal operation of a thermal couple, this is something you need to do. I have in my notes, guys, a better, more detailed version of this experiment, okay? But basically what you have is you have two junctions, say one of iron, one of copper, okay? You hold one junction is held in cold water. The other junction is heated and you'll get an EMF. So this diagram here isn't correct. So what you do is the heat source wouldn't be here. You put the heat source, say, over the copper wire and the voltmeter will be connected across the two. And what you'd find is there'd be an EMF, okay? All right? Because there's energy in the hot jumping over to the cold, basically. All right? Um, Boyle's law, that uh, if you change the volume of the gas, okay, by increasing the pressure, uh, pressure is inversely proportional to volume, you'll actually change and you'll be spiking the temperature. Hence why with Boyle's law, you wait a minute for let the air to go back down. Disagreement between thermometers, two different thermometers will give slightly different readings at the same temperature, okay? So how do they calibrate them? Generally, they do the following. With melting ice, the thermometers will generally agree that zero degrees, okay? They differ between zero and 100, okay? So what they do is they put the 
the two thermometers in ice, okay? And they see that it's zero degrees, so they mark that as zero degrees. They then put it into water boiling at 100 degrees and they see the maximum height. So that's their zero and their 100 marks. That's kind of the, the general idea, okay? Now, uh, why, and this is an example of a question, why do we need to have a standard thermometer? And here's your answer. We need to agree on one particular thermometer to have a standard because different thermometers have different thermonic properties, okay? All right, so that's why generally with an experiment you get given one thermometer, you use that one thermometer. You can't switch and get a new thermometer. If you get a new thermometer, you have to start the experiment again, okay? Because it'll have a different thermometer property, it's giving you different readings, and then your results are incorrect, okay? All right, so problem three here. Now, I don't have graph paper here, but the length of mercury column in a capillary tube is 3.2 centimeters when it's placed in melting ice. And it's that if the length of the column placed in a beaker of water is 10, using the, all right, so what you do basically, guys, if you get a question like this, okay? Very easy. You will obviously have to do it in graph paper. I don't have graph paper, so I'm just going to draw here. So you draw temperature on your y-axis, and then on your x-axis, you have the length of the column, okay? Now, what you do is this. Okay, let's do that again. All right, so this is your zero, zero. So zero centimeters and, of course, zero degrees Celsius. And we have up here 100 degrees Celsius. Now, it tells us that um, 3.2 centimeters when placed in melting ice. So what you do is you go out along your x-axis to 3.2. And that's your start point. Then... Uh, in the steam above the boiling water, it is 22.3 centimeters. So therefore, we, again, go out along our x-axis to 22 centimeters. And we... And this, of course, is not very accurate, I know. All right? And you just draw your straight line. Okay? And that's it. All you do then, once you get your straight line, you can answer any question. So here they want us to find... Um, Length of the column, if the length of the column placed in the beaker of water is 10 centimeters, calculate the temperature. What you do then is, of course, you go to 10 centimeters out along here, wherever your 10 centimeters is. Thank you very much, tablet, but I'd like you to stay down here. So let's say it's here, 10 centimeters, and you just simply go up to the graph and back to the side. And I think if you do this out, um, what did I get? You get around uh, 35 degrees, okay? So plus or minus one, so you get 36, 34, around there, okay? So it's around that, okay? Uh, actually, no, I think it's between 35 and 36 is the kind of accepted answer. And that's it. And then they can do the opposite. They'll say, what would the length of the column be at, I don't know, they'll say 90 degrees Celsius. And it's the same thing. You pick your thing and you just go across, down the line and down. And that's it. Okay? That's it. That is temperature. I told you this is going to be a short video. Any questions, leave in the comment section below or on the Edmode page. We'll get up to top 14 next. All the best.